Hey y'all, um, I wanted to offer uh, some tools that uh, David Benjamin has um, helped give the body of Christ to help understand a lot of um, some of the topics that are being spoken of uh, now. And I wanted to just kind of go through and give an example of one that is uh, a quote-unquote hot topic, uh, and I've gotten uh, comments on. So I'm going to go ahead and um, pull it up. It's, this is ChristiansNeedTheGospel.com, and I'm going to start from the beginning. Get this page here, okay? And I know a lot of y'all know already know all this and everything because you've been on it before, but for those who don't know and um, are interested in wanting to know more about whatever their subject is that they're looking for um, information on, you know, basically being a Berean and searching the scriptures out for themselves. And this is an awesome tool to do that. Um, so you click on this little thing in the, or little, um, I don't know, was it brown? Uh, three line thing. And let me move that out of the way here. And then you see this thing that says Learning Hub. You hear me say ChristiansNeedTheGospel.com slash Learning Hub. Um, you pull that down. And one of the topics that we're going to go to, and this is for a sub who uh, had, uh, e or not email me, um, had uh, messaged me in the comment section. Um, and it was really late at night, so I wasn't really that well uh, tuned in, but I did read what you had said and kind of answered you a little bit, but I really want to push you to, or not push you, uh, refer you to this site here. Um, you specifically asked about the covenants and prophecy. So as you can see, there's different things. There's the main one. And if you go into the main one, um, the, uh, was, yeah, the main learning hub right here. There is Christ is our righteousness um, teachings, and then Christ is our sanctification teachings, and there is a book called Christ is Our Righteousness, Sanctification, and uh, and Reward um, on here as well. If you go through and you see his books, and they're available on uh, ebook as well. Um, systems systems of error, which is another good one, because. It talks about all the different um, ways that the dispensations that can be talked about taught wrong, basically, um, i.e. hyper-dispensationalism um, and uh, other wrong ways of teaching it. And then you come to covenant prophecy. Um, these are all the ones that are uh, – talking about the new covenant versus the everlasting covenant and how we are not under any covenant, but we are partakers of the everlasting covenant. Okay. Um, it is only Israel who is under the uh, covenants. Okay. So, and that's been taught wrong as well. Um, many times in the Institutional fake churches and by the pulpit puppets. Um, the New Testament ministry. Um, uh, David wrote a book uh, a couple, what was it, about six months ago or so? Actually, it might be a little later than that. Um, called, uh, uh, what is it? Um, the Gospel Re Reconciliation, Paul's Revelation. Or Paul's, yeah, I think it's Paul's revelation like that. I'll show it to you in a minute. Um, and then, uh, like I said, you can go down here and you can ask a question. Like, for instance, um, why are we not under the new covenant? Easy peasy, right? Okay, so Eleazar is going to search. And I'm doing this, I, ha I don't have a computer, so. Okay, there's Eleazar, he's so cute. 
Um, so, okay, so here's my question. And he basically, you know, gives, uh, gives an answer. And again, with everything that we study or we, or we read or anything like that, we always have to back it up by scripture, okay? And allow Holy Spirit to speak truth into us, okay? Not saying that this is like wrong or anything like that, but anything. It, it just, it, it's, the Holy Spirit is the one that has to make it reality in our lives, okay? Um, we can... Thrilled, we can, we can, uh, how do I say this? Um, we can use the tools to help bring that about, but it's not until it, you see it for yourself that it becomes reality. Does that make sense? Hopefully. Okay. So let's see. Um, okay. And then there's, there's, uh, so he'll give an explanation and everything. And then Okay, and it, this is kind of like a, you know, a, a disclosure type of thing. Always compare his responses to the word. And that's what I'm saying as well. All right. Um, so, okay. So here are five videos, uh, five video recommendations uh, with summaries. And they give, you can uh, hit the summary and it gives you an example of what the video is going to be about. And, um you know, uh, you can watch it on YouTube. Then, um, I believe, let me see, hang on. Um, okay, that's, okay. Yeah, okay, so these, so this basically gives you the summary of everything. But I just encourage you to get to, to check this out, okay? Sorry if I'm going a little bit too fast. I don't mean to make anybody sick. But I want to go ahead and read this because this is a hot topic, right? And, but once you understand it through scripture and, and you, you kind of can't unsee it anymore. It's the best way that I can describe it. Um, okay. So my question was, why are we not under the new covenant? Okay. According to the perspective presented in the transcripts, there are a few keys, or excuse me, a few, uh, key reasons why the church is not under the new covenant. The new covenant was specifically promised to the house of Israel and the house of Judah. Jeremiah 31, Ezekiel 36. It is related to putting them back in their land and their priesthood and the putting away of their sins so they can dwell in the kingdom of, uh, of, uh, for a thousand years. Okay, a lot of people like to say that the, uh, the new heart, you know, oh, God's going to give you a new heart when you get saved. So, you know, um, uh, you won't sin anymore or um, you won't need, need to, to listen to teachers and everything. And you start literally hardening your heart to anybody even trying to talk to you about, no, this isn't right. But yet you're thinking that it is because it says, you know, you no longer need a teacher because now you're saved and you have it all taken care of, you know, because it says right here. Well, you're, misun you're, you're misunderstanding the scriptures. And... The more, the more you uh, harden yourself to anybody trying to help you understand it and show you the 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 um, uh, the truth of the scriptures versus somebody saying it through you know say a pulpit puppet or or somebody who um, is online you know on YouTube or something like that and it's contradicting what you've been taught. And this is where you have to literally just go, okay, Lord, I need to know the truth and believe me I have been here so many times and like literally down on my knees saying God I want the truth and the truth and nothing but the truth <laughs> you know um, and he will show you the truth which is himself as your life so I encourage you to again be Bereans and uh, study the scriptures for yourselves. Don't just don't just take one person's um, um, take on it, because you might find out that they are actually uh, deceived as well. So moving on, um, the church is a mystery, not part of Israel's prophetic program. 
the spirituality, destiny, and inheritance of the church are distinct from what is promised in the new covenant. The new covenant promises that God will write his laws in their hearts, cause them to walk in his ways, and they will not depart from him. This level of sinless perfection and supernatural uh, enablement is not the reality of the church in this age. We still struggle with the flesh and need admonitions to crucify it. That's why we reckon our flesh dead. Okay, we died with Christ. Um, you know, my favorite verse, um, I through the law am dead to the law. You know, I love, I love, I love, I love, love Galatians 2, 19 through 21 because it's how we live the Christian life. You know, it's not sinless perfection. It's wrecking our, reckoning our flesh dead, buried, and sleeping, resting while Christ becomes our new life through his life-giving spirit. And it's through his life that we are living and you know, um, just in, enjoying getting to know him, you know, enjoying our inheritance. Now we don't have to wait till the millennium. We can enjoy him now. Okay. And all glory to God for it too. The ministry of the spirit in the new covenant age will be different than the ministry of the spirit in the church age. In the new covenant, God himself will directly oversaturate and in, uh, enable the people. Whereas in the church, we have the spirit working through the gifts and ministries um, given to the body or to build up the body of Christ. Our gifts are not to flaunt, okay? Um, it's to build up the body of Christ. And when we build up the body of Christ, his fruit is manifested through his body, through all, through, uh, through us. Okay. But it's him doing it all. And, um, again, we're just resting and enjoying Christ and it's him bringing us into that rest. We can't force ourselves to rest. We can renew our minds and, you know, every day, which we're, uh, uh told to do. And, um, uh, what is it? Romans, I think. Um, I'm terrible at verses. Sorry, y'all. Um, you know, to renew our minds and to walk in the spirit and not in the flesh. And, and um, it's just recognizing who we are in Christ. It's our identity in Christ. Okay? We are children of God. We are heirs. We are co-heirs with Christ Jesus. We are uh, baptized into his death and into the body of Christ. And we have liberty through Christ. We, uh, the blood speaks for us. Okay. It shuts the mouth of those who are trying to say that we are not doing enough or we are, um, lazy and, you know, no good for nothing, greasy gracers and all that crap, you know, which honestly I'm proud to be, <laughs> you know what I mean? Because, I'm no longer struggling in the wilderness of trying to figure out uh, what God wants for me or feeling like I'm going to be punished if I don't do something, you know. I'm at peace with God. I'm justified by faith alone through the blood. And I can confidently stand boldly and say, uh-uh, you ain't putting that crap on me again. And believe me. I've been through it for many, many years of terror and fear and condemnation. And uh, it is such a relief to be able to breathe again. And it's been many years, but it's still a relief and just a blessing to truly know what grace is, which is grace is Christ himself as our rest. Amen. Okay, moving on. The key point is that the new covenant is specifically for Israel's future kingdom, while the church's uh, excuse me, while the church's relationship is God 
or to God is through our union with Christ and the everlasting covenant. Let me read that again because I totally screwed that up. The key point is that the new covenant is specifically for Israel's future kingdom, while the church's relationship to God is through our union with Christ and the everlasting covenant, not as a direct party to the new covenant. This distinction is important to maintain the gospel of grace and avoid al al allegorizing the new covenant to impose work-based spirituality on the church. And that includes the hyper-dispensationalists. Um, they like to say that they were under the, uh, was it the old covenant uh, works and, and they were saved by works plus or faith plus works. And that it's going to go back to that in the, Next gospel or something like that. I can't remember now. I used to I used to believe it. I used to believe it. And I used to follow a very famous pastor who everybody still seems to put up on a pedestal and want to keep as a sacred cow. But when you look at the scriptures, if you can deny Romans 4 and Hebrews, uh, what is it? Hebrews uh, 11, I think it is. I don't know, don't quote me on that. But, um, and you can actually say that, nope, it's because of what James said. You know, so forget Romans and forget forget Hebrews. Oh, I'm sorry, I forgot. Hebrews is for that, uh, uh, is for uh, Israel. No, it's not. Well, it is, but it's not. And what I'm saying is that it's not for the future. It's for now. Hebrews is a beautiful book of showing that there is only one sacrifice and one sacrifice alone, which was Christ himself. And that no bulls and goats or anything like that is going to make anything better. So why would they do, or why would uh, Paul write, which I, I believe, this is just my opinion, but um, just from his writings and his... his um, What's the word? Um, characters, characterization or um, a way of writing sounds very familiar from his other epistles. Okay, so I, that's why I think that he was written by Hebrew, or he uh, Hebrew he he wrote Hebrews. Um, you don't have to agree with me; it's no big deal. Okay, it's not a salvation issue, but um, he was, you know. Showing that it was not, it's not faith plus works. It's not listening to the Judaizers and saying, oh, okay, now you have to go back or, you know, first you have to proselyte and then you have to go back to the temple um, or become a proselyte. And then, and then now you have to go back to temple and everything. And, and uh, uh, it's seeing that you are free in Christ and, there's only one sacrifice, and you don't want to go back. I mean, it might as well have been better for you not to even know, you know. I know I'm probably explaining that totally wrong, and he's got teachings on this too. Um, but uh, it's it's cool. It's really, really cool to, to read the book of Hebrews when you get away from the hyper-dispensationalist way of teaching that it's only Romans through Philemon, or Philemon, however you want to say it. Um and yes, I have a little bit of a bitterness towards it because it really did put a lot of, um, uh, how do I say this? Um, a lot of confusion in my mind and thinking, well, wait a minute. And I was just constantly questioning, constantly. Nothing was making sense. Let's put it that way. When it was, it was like the Lord was showing me something within this way of teaching was wrong. And I was trying to search it out, basically, you know, searching out my own, uh, or own salvation or working out my own salvation. You know, didn't mean I wasn't saved already. I was just trying to figure out, you know, this, this isn't making sense. Why is this this? Why is this that? You know, why it just didn't make sense to me with what I was reading in scripture versus what somebody was saying. And this is why we have to be Bereans and study the scriptures for ourselves. Okay. 
Um, I know this is kind of all over the place, and I know I kind of started with, you know, wanting to answer this and everything, but I also wanted to do a video about um, the whole uh, hyperdispensationalism. It's, it, it, honestly, and I know this is probably going to get a lot of comments, a lot of people pissed off at me and stuff, hyperdispensationalism is evil. The teaching of hyperdispensationalism is evil. You know why? Because it tells you that you cannot um, believe, or you have no. Excuse me. It it shows you. Or it tells you that you had to believe a certain way, one way, and you. Um, are only supposed to believe a certain way now, but then if you're not saved, you have to believe a different way later. So it changes the gospel 100%. And I know that was totally all over the place, but hopefully you got what I'm saying. It's basically changing the gospel. It's freaking evil. You cannot change the gospel. It is faith alone that saves, okay? It is Faith alone in the record of, of, of God talking about his son being our propitiation, being our advocate, being our everything, how he came, how he was born, how he was um, crucified, how he was buried, how he ro rose from the dead on the third day, you know, buried for three days and rose on the third day, however you want to say it, okay? It's, it's, it's the gospel. And it's all throughout scripture. So if the gospel is all throughout scripture, how can it be changed? How is it from Genesis, from the very beginning, when God gave the gospel to Adam in the form of a, uh, a, a blood sacrifice, putting the, um, the uh, lamb skin, well, I think it was lambs but that's again it's my opinion um you know the covering it was a foreshadow of christ blood covering our sins and covering sin in general and wiping it away and then all throughout the book of genesis and on they were looking towards the promise of the seed it was all about faith in the seed it was not about faith plus works. And when you see the beautiful story of Isaac um, um, almost being sacrificed, okay, but when you, re <laughs> oh my gosh, I never realized when I heard this story being taught by hyperdispensationalists, it, after looking back, it cheapened it so much. Because the story of um, Abraham sacrificing Isaac was his faith. It was all about his faith in the seed, knowing that God promised him through a covenant, okay, through a covenant that he would be the father of many nations through his through his seed, through his line, okay, and would bring and would bring about many I don't remember how it goes but you know what I'm talking about okay um and how he believed in that promise knew God was not a liar and was willing to sacrifice his own son knowing that God would have to raise him from the dead because he could not deny the promise that he made to him. It's all about faith. It had nothing to do with the actual work. It was all faith. And then the beautifulness of how the angel stopped him and showed a ram stuck in the thicket and how <laughs> the thorns that were on this sacrifice that he took was a representation of Christ being sacrificed for us. 
how can you cheapen that? I'm sorry, it just it just really bothers me because people don't really understand how beautiful that story is, that account, that real event that happened, and what it represented. It had nothing to do with what he did. It was all what Christ did for us. And it was a picture of what he was going to do. And what God himself was going to do through Christ. Oh. So yeah. And again, my opinion. And it don't matter. But when you study it for yourself, I, I, I think anybody would come to that conclusion. That the hyper dispensationalist teaching is evil. Along with all the other ones that are just, just totally cheap in the Bible. That cheap in the, the beautiful history of, of, of Christ coming alive to people. Being alive to people. Being their life in nothing but faith. In the, in the seed. In the coming seed. And now. And that's why it's so disgust, disgusting when you have people that just cheapen the gospel and say it's all about you getting to work and everything it's so much more it's got nothing to do with our efforts or anything because we have none we're weak we're we are so ruined and until you see the difference between the flesh and the spirit you're going to keep struggling and thinking that you have to do it in your own strength. And you don't. You've been crucified with Christ. You've been buried with him. And you have absolutely no demand on you whatsoever to perform like these pulpit puppets and false teachers want to say. That you have to prove yourself, prove your faith. No. Faith is the substance of things hoped for. And the evidence of things unseen. And it's Christ in you as your hope of glory. And your life-giving spirit that we live by. That is That produces whatever... He wants to. We're just vessels that are being used to manifest Him and the beauty of Christ, not the beauty of man and His toils and troubles. Because God doesn't remember anything like that, it's nothing but wood, hay, and stubble. It's the beautiful, precious stones and gold and silver that is going to be refined through the fire. The rest is going to be burned up. So, I just pray that you... Uh, anybody who is struggling with that, just walk away. With the hyper-dispensationalism and stuff like that, walk away. You know, there's also another thing that's going on about, uh, you know, hyper grace, hyper. Uh, why? What, what's with the labels? Okay. Yes. God's grace is hyper. Okay. It, there's a verse in the Bible that, that, that talks about that. It's hyper abounding grace. It's grace upon grace. Meaning that there is no oil and water mixture. Zero. And. You cannot call yourself free grace, so to speak, if you want to put la <clears throat> put labels on it, which is stupid in the first place. And I did it. I actually did a uh, uh, a post about this as well. It was long, but you know how people were saying, "Oh, I'm hyper grace," or "I'm I'm free grace," everything, dude. I'm just a child of God 
saved by grace alone. And it's Christ himself is my grace because he is my everything. Therefore, it is all infinite grace. End of story. Okay. Stop putting labels on people. And then calling them wolves. Because they're not saying that they're hyper grace or hyper this or, or you know, or I mean, uh, um, uh, free grace. And then accusing people. Stupid. Grow up. Sorry. Okay, moving on. I gotta, I gotta stop this. <laughs> this is not where I wanted to go with this. So, okay, whatever. Um, anyway, there's verses that talk about this and, um, and then the, and then, like I said, there's, I mean, I just didn't really encourage you to, to, to look at this. Okay. So, and like I said, you have the videos to, that you can go and watch. And so I hope, um, uh, the listener that I talked to and forgive me, I forgot your name. Um, gets a chance to, uh, to look at this and I am praying for you, brother, and that, um, you know, your mind will be at rest through, uh, understanding of the fact that we are not under the new covenant, but we are a part of the everlasting covenant and the beautiful story of, uh, where is it? Um, Genesis 15, I believe explains what the everlasting covenant is all about and how, and I think I mentioned this to you as well, um, that Abraham was not a part of this covenant that was made with Christ himself. Okay. God made this covenant with Christ himself. So he made it with himself. So there's no works, no man involvement whatsoever. There's nothing we did or have to do. Okay, and so I encourage you to go to uh, to that um, to that story and and read that um, because it is it's it, it's a beautiful way of showing that man didn't do it, <laughs> you know, and we are not under any kind of covenant whatsoever. We're a part of the blessing and the everlasting covenant that God made with Himself. Okay, we we are partakers. We are inheritors of that uh, of that blessing and we can enjoy our inheritance today which is Christ himself and his life-giving spirit you know being our rest and everything it's just the gospel is not just saving grace it's um it's a daily uh enjoyment of our salvation so anyway i hope um those of you who don't under or uh, who don't um, don't know about this website, I pray you check it out. 